Elizabeth and a literary princess. If you are new here, welcome. I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in English literature with a focus on Victorian women novelists. And as you might expect, I love to read. Today I have my April TBR for you, which is really more of a pile of possibilities. I am participating in two events, and most of these books are for those events, with the exception of the first two. So we will begin with them, and then I will tell you more about the two events. Let's jump in! So my first read is for the George Eliot Project. For those of you who don't know, I have been reading George Eliot's fiction in publication order since January of 2023, and I am now nearing the end with Daniel Deronda. So this is Eliot's last novel, but she does have impressions of Theophrastus such after this, which, and it's a novella series of fictional essays. I don't really know what to call it, but we don't need to deal with that right now. Daniel Deronda. This is a reread for me, and this is the one that could take the place as my favorite Eliot book. Currently that distinction goes to Romola. We will have to see because I really loved this the first time I read it. This tells the interconnected stories of Daniel Deronda, obviously, and Gwendolyn Harleth, who is one of my favorite characters ever. And I'm just really looking forward to this. It's a long one. <laughs> I feel I've read so many chunky books lately, which is why pretty much all the other books on this TBR are short. But yeah, Daniel Deronda definitely happening in April. And then in May will be Theophrastus as such. The other book not for the events is The Doctor's Wife by Mary Elizabeth Braddon. And this I am reading for my dissertation. <laughs> so I'm planning to have a chapter on Braddon. I think The Doctor's Wife by, might be one of the main books I want to focus on, and I haven't read it yet. So, you know, I should do that. I have read two of Braddon's books, other books, Lady Audley's Secret and Aurora Floyd, and enjoyed both of them quite a lot. So I expect to really love The Doctor's Wife. The first event that I'm participating in is Picture This, which is hosted by Shelley Swearingen and Jack from Spread Book Joy. This is an event entirely devoted to reading and enjoying picture books. And I participated last year. I will link my video from last year. And I just had such a good time. I devoted like one week of April to just reading some picture books. I think I basically did like two days of it. It was so fun and lovely. And I feel like as an adult, I don't really read picture books very much anymore, but I still really love them. And I have a pretty hefty collection because I collect um, illustrated fairy tales. So I do love a good picture book and it's just so much fun to like kind of intentionally be like, okay, I'm going to read some picture books now. And they're just beautiful and lovely. And they, Shelley says that they're for everybody. And yes, they are for everybody. So there are some prompts and an extra challenge. I think I might do the extra challenge and I'll talk about that a bit in a second. But first I want to talk about one that will count for one of the prompts. Now the prompts are just all single words. There is joy, night, peach, nature, blue, and change. And this first book will count for night. And this is In the Night I Dream of Home by, and I'm going to butcher some names, <laughs> um, Vigelis Eliopoulos, and illustrated by Harrington Beckieris. This is a book that I picked up in the Acropolis Museum while I was in Athens for my honeymoon. And it is about the lost caryatid that was stolen by the British and that the British refused to give back to Greece. And I saw this and we had been hearing a lot about the caryatids. And I fell in love with the illustrations. It's so gorgeous. Let me see if I can get a really good one. No, oh, that's a sad one. We don't want that. <laughs> I mean, just. Oh. It 
it is absolutely stunning. Now I have definitely flipped through it and probably have ultimately read all the text, but I haven't really sat down and read through it in full, like just in a single setting. So I have not counted it as read yet, and I really want to read it. I just love the illustrations, they're so pretty, and I think it's a very important topic because, yeah, uh, hey, Britain, get, give them back their stuff. <sighs> but yes, so this will count for the prompt of night because it is right there in the title. Ha! <laughs> the second book that I have, and actually I only have two as of right now for this event, but the second one is The Sleeping Beauty, retold and illustrated by Trina Shart Hyman, who is my favorite illustrator. I reread her Snow White. Well, actually, it's her and somebody else. Somebody else did the writing and she did the illustrating for that version of Snow White I read last year, um, which I adore. And so I think, I think it was last year that I bought this because I wanted more books by her, because I love her. I mean, oh, look at it. Now this, I think, will count for the prompt of blue, because there's actually quite a lot of blues in the whole book. Blue sky, blue dress on Sleeping Beauty. And this is where I might do the extra challenge, which is to do an, a deep dive into an illustrator. And I would really love to do a little bit of a deep dive into Trina Sharp Hyman and read a few more of her books. So I looked on my public library's website and they do have quite a few by her. So I think at some point in April, I am going to just go to the library and get a ton of her books and read them. <laughs> and I will probably do a video if I do do that. So yeah, I'm really, I just love her illustrations so much. They are just absolutely gorgeous, sometimes really creepy. Like a lot of times actually really creepy, like especially Snow White, there were some kind of scary ones in Snow White. It's just so pretty. Yeah, I'm really excited. And the idea of doing a deep dive into Hyman's work is super exciting to me. And the second event is the TBR Clear Out Readathon hosted by Katie from Books and Things. The idea of this readathon is to read books that are on your physical TBR. And boy, do I need to do that. <laughs> so I recently um, put all of my physical books into a database. And it turns out I have 631 books, which is a lot. My husband's words for it were, that's disturbing. I think that's a little dramatic. But 178 of those books are unread, which is actually like really good, I just want to say. And some of those are like big anthologies, like my Norton anthologies, which I'm never going to read, or like reference texts, like dictionaries. I'm not reading a French dictionary straight through. Um, and then there are also 22 that are DNFs. And usually when I DNF a book but keep it, it means I want to go back to it. Or it's a short story collection and I've only read a few of them. So this is where I have more up a pile of possibilities. And Katie also does have um, seven challenges if you want to participate in them. And I think I will. And uh, some of them can't, like they, it's pretty easy to work in. So the first challenge is to set your own TBR clear out goal. I would like to read at least five books from my TBR. Um, but like the physical TBR that does not include Daniel Deronda and the doctor's wife and not including the picture books because they're picture books and it's, they're not very hard. <laughs> but I like, I really need to get through at least a few of these books. <laughs> They've, some of them have been here for a really long time. Okay, so these are some of the possibilities. I'm such a mood reader sometimes, and that's why I wanted to just like grab a bunch and say, maybe, but leave myself open to reading anything off of my physical TBR.
So the first one actually counts for the prompt of read a book that has been on your TBR for a very short time. So this is one that I got fairly recently for a birthday. And this is Histoire au Comte du Temps Passé, Comte de Mamère Loy, um, by Charles Perrault. It's Charles Perrault's fairy tales. Um, tales of Mother Goose is what that translates to right here. And that's um, stories or tales of past times, I think is the direct translation. But yeah, fairy, fairy tales. Um, this is in French. So one of my goals for the year is to read two books in French. And I think this is the one that I'm going to start with. This collection is edited by Scott Fish. And it has lots of notes. And it also has an introduction about for an introduction to students because it is specifically for students who are learning French. Hi, that's me. So I would really like to get to this one if possible. But if it waits till another month, that's fine, as long as I get it read this year. The next possibility is The Biographer's Tale by A.S. Byatt. Oh, just duckled edges. I don't like them. Anyway, so I bought this a while ago, a few years ago, and A.S. Byatt passed away last year. So I decided this year that I did want to read one of her other books that I have that I haven't read. I have read Possession and Angels and Insects. So since this is the one that I have owned for the longest that's unread, what has dust on it? Ew. Anyway, since I've had this one longer than the other book that I have by her, which is the children's book, um, I have put this on here and I would like to get it read this year. Next possibility is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee. This has been on so many TBRs and I haven't gotten to it. And honestly, I think this kind of counts for the prompt of read a book from your TBR that you fear you have lost interest in. So when I first got this, I was really excited for it. It is a YA fantasy dark academia set at a boarding school with witches. And like that sounds like something I would have loved. <laughs> But I'm like kind of mm, just moving away from that a bit. I don't know. I just I'm like never super excited at the prospect of picking this up. But I bought got it from Owl Crate. So it, it's a special edition. It has silver edges. It has prettiness on the cover. It has prettiness on the inside book jacket. Like, so I just feel like I really should read it. And I feel like I should like it. It sounds like I should, but I don't know. I just like have kind of lost interest in it. So I would really like to get to this this month. So I could decide whether I want to keep it on my shelves or give it away. Another one that's been around quite a while that was a, a birthday or Christmas gift from my mom like a really long time ago is Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller. This is a gothic historical fiction I'm pretty sure and I think it was recommended somewhere by somebody for fans of Sarah Waters and that's why I wanted it and I do believe I read the first few chapters and then got distracted by something else so I would definitely like to read this one sometime this year and again decide do I want to keep it on my shelves or not Next possibility counts for the prompt of read a book on your TBR that you are very excited to get to. And this is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. So this is a translated book from Japanese, translated by Philip Gabriel. And it is a portal fantasy about some kids who go through a a mirror um into like this wondrous castle and they have a they have to i think do do something i don't remember anyway this has been on my tbr for a bit i got it as a birthday or christmas present and um i'm really excited for it i don't know why i keep not reading it because i love portal fantasies and i've heard such good things about this and i think i'll really love it so yeah, I feel like this is a good time to read it. 
another birthday or Christmas present. This is The Idiot by Elif Bachman. I've heard amazing things about this, particularly from Alana Estelle. And I actually read like half of it two years ago. Um, but uh, I was just reading so many other things at the time and I'd read this over such a long period of time. Like it was months just to read half the book. Not because I wasn't enjoying it, but because I didn't have time. And I decided, okay, I'm gonna DNF this for now and go back to it. So this is kind of one of my top priorities um, for the year, other than books for school, obviously, because I would really like to finish it. This next book counts for actually two prompts. Read one of the shortest books on your TBR, and again, the prompt to have read a book from your TBR that you fear you have lost interest in. This is Companions on the Road by Tanith Lee. It is only 122 pages, so very short. Um, I have no idea what this is about. <laughs> it's a fantasy book. So I had only picked this up at a used bookstore because there is a book by Tanith Lee called White as Snow that is a retelling of Snow White that I really wanted to read. And so, you know, when I'm at used bookstores, I go around and see if I can find any books that are on my um, Goodreads TBR that I've wanted for a while. So I looked to see if they had anything by Tanith Lee and they did not have White as Snow, but they did have this. So I was like, eh, why not? But I have never really felt the need to pick it up. And again, I don't even know what it's about because there is a giant sticker covering half of the summary. But it was also only 99 cents. That's probably why I was like, well, you know, it's only 99 cents. So again, I would just like to read this and see, do I want to keep it or do I want to get rid of it? <laughs> And honestly, if I don't pick it up this month, I think I might just donate it because if I don't read it now, I don't think I ever will read it. Next one counts for the prompt of read a book that has been on your TBR for a very long time. And boy, has it been a long time. This is Dragon Song by Anne McCaffrey. My aunt gave this to me when I was in elementary school. I'm 30. Yeah, it's one of the only books that she gave me that I have not read. Um, I think there's like two of them, this and another one. Like, it's not even long. It's 192. It's not even 200 pages. And I remember having it out a lot as a kid because I loved the cover. And then there's it, this... Um in the front like a list of everybody's like dragons and fire lizards and I loved that and then there's also little like songs at the beginning of each chapter and I used to go through and read those but I never read the book so I don't I would have been between like eight and 10 at this time. I don't know, like it's time, it's time to read it. I also hear people talk about it fairly frequently over on Tumblr and they seem to all really like it. And I've read Anne McCaffrey before and liked her. So let's just do this. Let's just do this. The next book that I have is The Goblin Emperor by Katherine Addison. This is not one that I've had for a while, but I just, this is another one that can count for the prompt of I'm really excited to get to it. It just sounds really good. and It sounds like I'll really enjoy it. I've heard a lot of people on Tumblr talk highly of it, so. And then the final book is technically two books. <laughs> this is the collection Different Seasons by Stephen King. It contains my absolute favorite book by him, The Body, which was the basis for the movie Stand By Me. And then I have also read in it The Breathing Method. But there are two in here that I have not read. Rita Hayworth and The Shawshank Redemption. Yes, yes, that Shawshank Redemption. And Apt Pupil. I've had this since I was in middle school and I've never read these two. So this is another one that's been on here for a 
very long time. And I'm like, girl, just read them so that I can mark this off in my database instead of like one of the DNFs. It can now be complete because I will have read all four of them. So I would very much like to get to these. And also they're novellas, so they're short. So one would hope that I could do it. <laughs> so that is my April TBR or pile of possibilities. Let me know down in the comments below. Have you read any of these? What did you think? Are you participating in Picture This or the TBR Clear Out Readathon? What are you reading for them? What else are you planning to read in April? If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel to see more of my bookish content. It has been great chatting with you. I will see you soon. Bye.